Hi, I'm Mikey Williams, and we've just come out of lockdown, well, in Wales anyway, so my first trip out for probably nine weeks. So I've come along to a little local lake, it's absolutely full of carp. I'm going to attack it really simple, I'm going to fish shallow with pellets, I've just got some fours and some six mil pellets on my side tray. Just been loose, loose feeding a lot of four mil pellets, and as I look out there now, there's carp everywhere, so I'm going to whiz this pole out now, and see if we can get bent into it. That one didn't take long. Just been loose feeding them four mil activated pellets. Feeding a lot of them to be fair, a couple of pouches at a time. There's a lot of fish up, so the noise of them pellets is just bringing them into the peg and then I've got like a bit of a mugging rig on then. So I can like pick out individual fish, just flick rigs at them. That one's taking a little orange waft of that one. But uh, they're supercharged in here, so we've got some serious gear on. Like old 25 main lines, black hydroelastic, and even that they're still ragging you everywhere. But we'll do our best to get this one in. They're all angry commons. Between like seven pounds, probably the smallest one we've had, and some of the ones we've seen are probably closer to 20. So I don't know what's going to happen if you hook one of them. So we'll just take our time with it. All the time still feeding pellets. Just drawing them in. Two or three pouches at a time just to make that noise. And you can see almost straight away there's an odd fish just mooching around the pellets then. Just setting up your next fish for when you go back out. It takes some getting in, mind. <coughs> so just keep everything low. Not pulling the heads off, there's no need, you know, the gear's strong enough to hold them, but they'll still, still pull you a bit. Just keep it all nice and low, nice and smooth, until they come up under your feet. This one's not far away now. When he comes, look. Another angry one. Seven or eight pound, I expect. Half the size of some of the ones that we've seen out there. Just put a bit of pressure on him there now. God, I don't know when to give up. <coughs> Come on, old boy. Nice look, decent fish again. Wouldn't need many of these if you were in a match on you. <coughs> There he comes. There he is, look. Oh. Didn't like that then, didn't like that net. Sure. It's a bit bigger than I thought. It was under my feet now, making a right mess of this year. How not to net them. We got him that time, look. There you are. Probably easy eight or nine pound again, I expect. The little orange wafter right in the middle of his top lip. Old angry old common. We're slipping back there, look. Fire a few more pellets in. And we're straight back out there. See if we can nail one of them bigger ones. These fish are proper tuned in now on these four mil pellets. I rattle of them on the surface all the time. As soon as you feed, you can see like three or four fish come into the pellets. So it's important just to keep, keep them going in regular. And with four mils, you can feed a, a hell of a lot of them as well to keep a fish in your peg. That one's just going, like all the others, going absolutely ballistic over there now. We'll hold on to him. Really strong gear on now. We've upped it from this morning. O25 main line. 025 hook length, size 10 QM1. Because some of them aren't the biggest fish in the world, but they just fight like stink. And you, if you don't get them under control, they, they just bust you off. Like so. so this one's trying to do his best to do it under this tree. 
we keep like a firm pressure on him, not pulling his head off, just keep a nice bend in the pole. Don't let him like sort of run everywhere he wants because you, you just be end up playing him all day, but nice steady pressure, keep a pole low. And break off halfway down then just in case he runs. You've got the option to put those sections back on. And if you've got a chance, try to get in the habit of feeding some pellets as you're playing the fish as well. Just line your next fish up. Just keep them going in because as soon as you stop feeding, you can, it's been clear to see today, as soon as you stop that feed going in, they just drift out of your peg and it takes a while to get them back again. So he's going on down by that tree now. Going absolutely ballistic. Brute. Oh, we got him round there now. He's still having a go. Even with Black Hydro, they're still bloody running you ragged like. There you are. There he comes now. So nice firm pressure now when he comes into your feet. Look, not a massive fish, like, but it's just crazy how hard they can fight. There we are. In the net first time. Probably a small one for today, six pound, I expect. Probably the smallest one we've seen. Try and get him under control. Nice common again. Here's the wafter still on the band. Ready for another one, if you keep still. There he is. Lovely fish, that. Right, so we've just put that fish back now. I'm just going to feed a few more pellets. Touching on what I've, what I've been feeding today, we fed the 4 mil mainline activated coarse pellets. They come in 2, 4, 6 and 8 mil sizes, so something to cover every eventuality, really. But today, 4 mil has been best. We've feeding a lot of them. What I really like about them is the really meaty smell. Like summertime now, carp are on the feed, looking for, for a lot of high protein food. So the, like the meaty smell really draws them in. And from sort of spring until autumn, that's my go-to sort of flavor. And I know all across the countries, like good anglers like Ben Hag swears by these places like Viaduct, another place full of big carp, and all over the country the same. So for the former say, what's nice is obviously they're lighter and smaller than sixes and eights. So they're sitting up in the water column, so I can feed a lot of bait and it'll just sort of keep the, the fish up in the top two foot. And when you've got that happening, you can see, you can see when there's fish in your peg. So like I say, I'll feed two or three times now with a catapult and you'll see an odd shape. But with my rig, I've got a little bit of a longer lash than usual. So I can pick off those fish that are just on the outskirts of the feed. And what I've done, I've mashed it up with a little eight mil wafter. I've got all different sort of colours in there, yellows, whites, pinks. But the chocolate orange one today has been just a job. You can flick it out and just sort of watch it just fall slowly. And a lot of the time you can see the carp take it before the actual float moves. So I'm going to keep feeding that now. Whilst there's still an odd fish there, I'm going to whiz a pole back out. And see if we can get another one. There we are, another pretty quick fish. Just on the outskirts of the feed again. Nothing really in the feed, but... Those ones that are just loitering around the edges, they're the ones that are catchable today. So if we get this fish in, we can have a quick look then of the three rigs I've set up for this sort of fishing, all with a different purpose. But it's well worth having them all set up, cover your options, because you always find one will be better than the others, and, and this sort of middle rig has been the boy today. So we'll just try and get this in, and then we'll have a quick look at them. Oh no bite. There we are, another, another common again. There's ballistic in the net, like all of them. Nicely hooked. Let's pop in back then. Nice. And we'll just have a quick run through of the rigs. I'll start with my shallowest one. The first one, straight away you notice is quite a shortish lash for, for sort of carp shallow fishing. This is the rig for fishing in the feed when the fish are actively eating the pellets and they're right where you're feeding. So I've got a nice like 13 hollow, 
pretty strong but, but nice. There's 022 mainline on there, which is N-Gage, a little Mick Wilkinson cookie, Dibber, just two little number nines, it's really simple this sort of fishing, two little number nines, and then I've got a 12 inch hook length on there, so that just helps, when I fish a shallow for cab, I don't like, you know, like a loop to loop, sort of six inches away, I like to get it up, up out of the way so it's a nicer drop, so there's my loop to loop, 12 inches up, and then, what I thought would be right for today, but just goes to show you fishing, you never really know what's going to happen. There's O, O20 power fluorocarbon on there to a size 12 km one Now I thought that would be bang on for this, you know, this sort of fishing today, but as soon as we hooked our first carp, it became apparent that was well under gunned. So this has been the main catching rig. This is sort of, you're in between catching in your feed and mugging rig. So you can see you've got a, a longer lash there now this was tied up on the same material as the other one, but we've stepped it up. This is the thickest line out of my box, 025 Guru Pulse. It's a real line, you know, really durable. So we've stepped up to that. Again, the same little float, a little cookie, two little number nine shots. Again, a 12 inch hook length, but this time of 025 power and a 10 km one. So that's my sort of rig for flicking around the feed around the main area of the feed, you can see an odd fish mooching around. You can flick at them, you can fish it in the feed if you want to, but it's just a great sort of like in-between rig. And then the last rig, we haven't really picked it up today, there's been, hasn't been much need because the fish has been really good. But this is my sort of out and out mugging rig or swinging rig if you want. Long length of line between your, your elastic and your float. A 0.3 crystal dibber with five number nines just to add that little bit of weight, just to swing. Again, a 12 inch hook length and a, on this one, because because I haven't changed it, because that's really been the best rig, there's a 12 km one on there, but if I was catching on this today, it'd probably be a 10 km one and 025 hook length. But there's just your sort of three standard sort of rigs for this sort of fishing. On a good day, you catch them in the feed and you fish with a shorter line and they just pull elastic, but they're a little bit more cute today. So you've got to sort of swing it at them just on the outskirts of the feed. It's been really nice, but it's well worth having them all up because you don't know what's going to happen on each day. Just like that rig, I've had to tie that up on the bank with a stronger gear. So nothing's by the playbook in fishing. So just keep your wits about you and you won't go far wrong. Well, there you are. Just hooked into another absolute lunatic. Just changed from those wafters now, catching on pellets, six mil pellets now, just flicking it around the peg. And I've also put the long mug in rig on because they've sort of just backed off away from the pole. This one's going ballistic down here again. Be a miracle if we get this. Honest to God, I've never seen nothing like these things. It's gone round now, down behind a tree. Down the margins. Everything's locked up. Pole is like a banana. If I get this in, I'll have to put the lottery on the way home. So I'll be mega lucky to get this. Oh, he's coming, he's coming. Not over yet. Battle to the death here. You got him coming now. We got him coming. If you can just stop our first run, you, you can get a bit of ground back on him. You've got a chance then. Here he comes, look. There he comes. So we're going to try and make this the last fish of the day because, to be fair, I've hardly got any gear left. They've stretched the guts out of all my elastics, broken main lines, lost floats. But we're out fishing and that's the main thing. And that's probably the biggest fish of the day, that. that's an absolute sow. So if we can get this in, we'll get a nice picture of him. And then I'll just sort of recap on what's been the best feed-wise, rig-wise, where to fish. So let's just try and concentrate and get this one in the net. Yeah, that's a big one that is. Go 
is going extinct. No wonder so many break you when they fight like this and they're this big. Oh, it's going again. Don't do that. Don't do that, old boy. Just don't want to give up. Here he comes. Let me get a chance now. Let me get a chance at him. Get him head first if we can. No. God, I just keep going, man. Head down and boring around. Oh, look at it. I just can't believe it. Oh, I have to put sections on you now. So just keep keep everything nice and low, nice and steady. Try not to lose your patience and pull the heads off. Just try and keep everything together. He's a big old, big old boy. Thick set they are. It's deceiving how heavy they are. Like here he comes now. Look at that. again. Oh, shifting some water there. Be a nice one to finish on if we can get him. He's going off again like a steam train. Some sections on. How does he do it? How can that go off like that again? Just trying to do me in the tree again. Like an obstacle course here. Let's start the process over again now. Try and get him back on a short line. So here we go again. Start it over again. Just nice and steady again. Wait for your chance. If you can get him to pop up, head first will be nice. There he is. There he is in the net. Oh, I thought I was never going to get that then. Oh, he's a good fish too, no wonder, man. No wonder we've lost so many of these. Turbocharged. Right, I'll try and get him out gently. Right, here we go. Oh, look at that. That's an absolute brute of a common. And he's got another hook in his mouth as well. So somebody's hooked him before. And was unlucky not to get him. But I'll just try and hold him up. Because he is a clonker, that. Right. Here we go then. Just hold him over the net. There you are. Great big common. Wild as they come. He's proper dense. He's a, that's a proper lump of a fish, that one. But there's loads of these like this in here. We've had an awesome day. Awesome to get back out fishing after a couple of weeks off. So we'll just pop in back and we'll just have a quick little rundown of everything. Okay, so we've had a mega, mega days fishing today. It's been awesome, awesome weather. Fish have been big and angry. But just a few things just to recap on. is feeding. Today's been four mil activated, has been the boy. A lot of pellets, two or three big pouchfuls. Get them fish home in and around the pellets. Those lighter pellets just help hold this fish up in the upper layer so you can pick them out. One thing I haven't touched on, which is probably the most important but a kit of this sort of fishing, is some polarised glasses. Without these, you literally wouldn't see a fish there now. So a good pair of glasses, keep a feed going in. Your rigs, the sort of middle rig has been best like we talked about earlier on today, but at the end, the mugging rig really came into its own the last going off of the session there, where the fish are just pushed out past pole range. They got a little bit cute towards the end because we've had so many. So just be aware, I have a variety of, of top kits set up with a few different rigs. 
Now's the perfect time to get out and do this sort of fishing. Whilst it's hot, the fish are up. So make the most of this weather. Get out fishing, catch some big angry carp. I hope you learned a little bit from that and I'll see you again next time.